Well, I'm happy you could join us again today for our wonderful Day in the Lord broadcast. Uh, We're marching through Psalm 16 this week. We looked at the first two verses yesterday, and we're going to pick up on verse 3 in just a moment. Uh, But before we do that, uh, we're going to also go over to Psalm 73 to look at uh, a a verse of Scripture, a couple verses of Scripture that that embellish and uh, enlighten us concerning what David has already said. Remember, yesterday we said that as David goes to the Lord during a difficult time of his life, he is uh, he's focusing and looking in different directions. And he begins by looking at God and, uh, and focusing on the Lord. And then he, at the end of verse 2, he says, I have no good beside thee. And he's not saying here, again, that there's no other good things in life, but compared to, to God, none of these things stack up. In Psalm 73, verse 25, uh, maybe there's some other verses that could uh, help us with this. Here's what he says at that time. He says, Whom have I in heaven but you? And beside you I desire nothing on earth. So notice the comparison. It's not that he didn't enjoy good food and family life and and, uh, the beauties that God gave him in nature and all these kinds of things. But beside you I desire nothing on earth. There's nothing that compares with the Lord. In verse 26, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And so whatever might happen to him personally and physically and and materially doesn't matter in in a sense that the Lord is his portion. Drop down to verse 28. But as for me, the nearness of God is my good. I have made the Lord God my refuge, uh, that I may tell of all your works. And so his attention is, is riveted on God himself and the good that comes from God and the relationship he has with God. So that's where David starts in Psalm 16. This is the kind of attitude he has towards the Lord himself. And if we have that kind of a thought process, if that's how we see God, then so many other things in life begin to be ironed out and taken care of because our focus is not on us or our circumstances or on our, the enemies that are around us, but our focus is on God. <clears throat> but he does move on with the second round of focusing here in verse 3. He moves from his focus on God to his focus on those around him. Because we live in a world of people. We have relationships. And those relationships matter. And those relationships are important. He starts with a relationship with the saints in verse 3. For as for the saints who are in the earth, they are the majestic ones in whom I, is all my delight. So David looks around and he sees other followers of the Lord, saints, holy ones. Uh, These are people that want to be like him. They want to delight in the Lord. They want to love the Lord. They want to follow the Lord. They want to dedicate their their lives to God. And David is uh, encouraged and impressed by people like that. Uh, We we live in in an age right now where a lot of people are trying to go solo in their spiritual life. They are tired of messing with people. Uh, churches have let them down or are just simply too difficult. Uh, they feel that they can worship God, serve God, live for God personally by themselves without other people or the church or other believers. And that's that simply is not found in the scriptures, Old or New Testament. The Lord has made us relational. The Lord wants us to be part of a community of the followers of Jesus Christ. We all need that fellowship. We need that encouragement. We need to have an outlet for the gifts he's given us and in turn, the gifts that others have to minister to our souls as well. That's how the Lord has created us. And David appreciates that. He looks at these people and he says, these are the people I delight in. Isn't that a a blessed thing to be able to look around and see people in your own world, your church, your, your fellowship, that you can actually say, I delight in them. Oh, no, they're not perfect people. Uh, They might even irritate us on occasion, but we delight in them. They are our friends. They're going our direction, and they too love the Lord. But there are those that are in our world that are not like that, and he doesn't minimize that in verse 4. The sorrows of those who have bartered for another God will be multiplied. I shall not pour out their drink offering of blood, nor shall I take the names upon my lips. Here David is saying there's another group of people that they have bartered for another God. That is, they're not content with the true God. They want something else, something different, and so they are basically trading God in for someone else. What does he say about them? 
the sorrows of those who barter for another God will be multiplied. If not immediately, ultimately, if not in this life and the next, there is a great price to pay when we trade out God for anything else. And David says, I won't be part of these people. I will not pour out my their drink offering of blood, and nor will I take their names upon my lips. I'm separated from them. I'm not going to walk in the counsel of the ungodly, as we see in Psalm 1. He's going to walk in the counsel, in the life, of the fellowship with those who are true saints who love him. He'll not be swayed by those who are bartering for another God. Wonderful pattern, wonderful piece of wisdom for you and I to follow. We'll pick up on verse 5 tomorrow. I hope you can join us.